Do you ever think you've been discriminated because of it? Perhaps you didn't receive a job interview because of it. Or you did receive a job interview because of its sweet sound to the job recruiter. How would you ever know if a recruiter is name bias? Well, change your name <laughs> and see the response. Hello, I'm Suzanne F. Stevens, Conscious Contribution Cultivator for the You, Me, We group. Welcome to We Wednesdays, a short weekly video infusion of how to maximize your meaning by consciously contributing to your community, country, or beyond. When I was interviewing pioneering African women for Wisdom Exchange TV, I'd ask for the resume. I was amazed that each one of them would have their photo attached to it. In the West, that was considered a no-no, since it could be exposing a bias. But as mentioned in the previous We Wednesday, that bias can also work in your favor as positive prejudice. So to include a picture or not. Similarly, your name could create the same sort of bias, depending on which country you are applying for a job. Your name could influence a job opportunity or be a barrier to entry. An article written by Stephanie Thompson in the World Economic Forum deserves sharing. She highlights how talent managers and recruiters favor certain ethnic names over others. See the link below for the full details. But here are some highlights. In 2011, researchers sent out almost 13,000 fake resumes to over 3,000 job postings. The academics went back to the data at the start of 2017 and found that people with Chinese, Indian, or Pakistani sounding names were 28% less likely to get invited to an interview than fictitious candidates with English sounding names, even where their qualifications were exactly the same. That's according to the researchers at Ryerson University and University of Toronto. Another fact, in some situations, the discrimination was even worse. For example, if resumes had an Asian sounding name paired with some or all foreign qualifications, employers were between 35% in the case of a large firm and 60% in the case of a small firm, less likely to call that candidate for an interview. Another fact, a small study commissioned by the French government found that employers were less likely to interview candidates with North African sounding names. Another fact, over in the United Kingdom, an all parliamentary group study from 2012 found that women who whitened their names or made them sound more British had to send only half as many applications before being invited to an interview as those who sounded foreign. So what can you do about such biases? According to the same World Economic Forum article, some big companies like HSBC or KPMG and Deloitte, for example, have already implemented what is being called name-blind recruitment in an attempt to stamp out discrimination. The problem with this approach is, well, perhaps it only delays the inevitable. Once a candidate makes it to a face-to-face -face interview, unconscious and sometimes conscious bias rears its ugly head yet again. In Sweden, they conducted this nameless approach with no lift in hiring ethnically diverse people. So why should we care? Well, one answer is inclusion, providing everyone with an equal opportunity to succeed. However, if you are not motivated by the you in you, me, we mindset, which focuses on the consciousness of our actions and the impact on others, then try this one on for size. Focus on me, which is our responsibility to contribute. And that still doesn't work for you? Well, let's go deep and do it for profits. Ethnically diverse companies, 35% more likely to outperform their non-diverse counterparts. Those organizations that discriminate in their hiring aren't just doing potential candidates a disservice. They're shooting themselves in the foot. Ouch, <laughs> that's smart. Do you think you have ever been favored or discriminated against because of your name? Please share where, when, and how so we all become more aware of our biases. In the next We Wednesdays, we'll focus on communication biases, 
the things that we say and do that unconsciously re reveal our preferences, and more importantly, how to turn them into an inclusion, essential to engage teams, collaborators, and clients. Until next time, make your contributions count.